Hey YouTube, Andy here. Today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on Lenovo's ThinkPad X1 Nano Gen 2. I've been a fan of ThinkPads in the past and was intrigued when Lenovo launched this slimmed down X1 last year. So let's take a look at their sophomore effort and see if it lives up to the reputation of ThinkPads past or comes in a little bit light. I have the version with the i5-1240p processor with 16GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD. The other specs like screen are the same across all the X1 Nano, so I won't get into those. And with that out of the way, let's start by talking about the build quality. Having spent years using a full-size X1 Carbon at my last job and about a year using one personally, I can say that the X1 Nano Gen 2 totally lives up to the X1 Nano name when you're just looking at the sturdiness of the chassis. There's no noticeable flex carrying this laptop one-handed or pounding on the keyboard in intense typing sessions. As X, although as every X1 series reviewer always notes, these things are absolute fingerprint magnets with that soft touch finish. I haven't cleaned mine, so this is more or less what you can expect yours to look to look like in between regular wipe downs, which will be pretty regular with one. One final note on build quality is that I did notice some squeakiness in some of the keys when I, on the keyboard when I first received the laptop, most noticeably with the backspace key and some others in that area. Fortunately, this seems to have gone away as I've been using it over the last month and a half. Uh, so it seems like it may have just been really tight manufacturing tolerances that required a little bit of break in. So it hasn't really been too big of a deal for me, but I did figure that it was worth mentioning. I'll go ahead and stick to the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard is probably one of the biggest disappointments to me on the X1 Nano. Before I overstate anything, I want to go ahead and say that it's still a really solid keyboard for such an incredibly thin and light laptop. The keys are responsive and stable, but the issue I have is that it feels just way flatter than other ThinkPads I've used, even the not that much larger X1 Carbons. Uh, it also feels a little bit squished to me, um, although back to the flatness, it has more of like a Dell sort of XPS 13 type feeling, but it still has the rounded curved keys, uh, sort of Lenovo style, which makes it feel, I don't know, a little odd. I feel like the, the sharper keycaps that Dell use make that style of key bat, key keyboard uh, work a little bit better. Uh, I actually think the X1 Nanos might work better if they did something like that and sort of moved away from more of a traditional ThinkPad key, key cap uh, design. But, you know, I don't know. So I don't love the keyboard, it's not awful. Um, moving on to the trackpad, this is gonna be a little sacrilegious as a ThinkPad enthusiast, but I've never actually been that much of a track point enthusiast. The track point is also known as the, uh, the mouse nipple uh, or other worse things than that. So not worse, just different. <laughs> so this is a little sacrilegious because a lot of ThinkPad people love those, but the X1 Nano is a device where the smaller trackpad due to dedicating buttons to go along with the track point you really feel that due to how small this laptop is. And this trackpad just feels really small. Um, it's a pretty good trackpad, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not an awesome trackpad, but it's pretty good. But it's really small, and you, you do notice it. Moving on to the screen, it's a pretty excellent screen. It's 16 by 10, matte, 450 nit, IPS. Um, it's really color accurate. I think it's, you know, it has one of those really fancy ratings, P3 or something like that. Um, so really great looking screen. It seems to be 450 nits. I have an HP Aero 13 kicking around with a 400 nit rated screen. Um, and it gets brighter than that and it, it looks more accurate than that. So it's a really good looking screen, which is awesome. Uh, if there's one thing I could nitpick a little bit about on the screen, and this is a, a really big nitpick, is that on Windows 11, I find the resolution for scaling to be slightly awkward. Because um, on Windows, you want to stick to like 150 or 125, one of those values, because there are some issues if you try to set custom values. And I just feel like, and it's more of a Windows 11 issue uh, where the user interface, the taskbar is just really fat for some reason. But I find that the scaling is just a little, little odd. I, I wish it was uh, a little smaller at 150% or a little bigger at 125, but that's a weird nitpick. 
One nice feature on the X1 Nano that's sitting just above the screen is a 1080p webcam with an f2.0 lens. Now, with the sensor as small as the webcam is, I'm not sure how much that's going to really help you in terms of depth of field and giving you a blurry background, but any extra light definitely helps. That's also accompanied with some pretty good sounding microphones, as you can hear, so the X1 Nano Gen 2 is a very capable video conferencing machine. All right, and speaking of video conferencing, you may also want to be able to hear your colleagues in video conferencing, or maybe not. That's really up to you, or just listen to music and watch YouTube videos. So how are the speakers on the X1 Nano? They're, you know, they're very okay. Um, you can do a lot worse on thin and light laptops. You can also do a lot worse on, on ThinkPads, at least if you go back a couple of years. There were some really rough ones. I have a P72, which is a huge laptop bad speakers, but getting back to the X1 Nano. The speakers have pretty good representation of sound um, across like the entire spectrum. Like you can even hear that, you know, it represents that bass is supposed to be there, even if you're not really hearing it, but it is definitely lacking on bass and they don't get as loud as you would sort of, you expect them to when you're cranking up the volume because the volume sort of caps out around 70 percent um, or 70 sort of points on the volume slider and once you go up past that you're getting very slight volume increases but at the same time they're not blowing out uh, and, and distorting so that's a that's a positive they are solidly okay speakers another option for audio is to plug in a pair of headphones to the audio jack which is one of only three ports on the entire laptop, along with the two USB-C Thunderbolt ports that are used for charging or external displays, docks, whatever you want to use those for, everything else. You should know by now how much of a problem having minimal ports like that is for you, so I'll just add that having one USB-A port would go a long way in certain situations. All right, moving on to battery life and performance. Battery life has been a lot better than I expected, although my expectations were pretty low because there are a lot of people sort of dogging Lenovo's choice to put a P-series processor in the X1 Nano Gen 2. But I found that on battery and when you have it turned down to sort of a better battery life, which you can set or like, you know, more efficient, which you can set even when plugged in, that it seems to clock down just as effectively as the full-size X1 carbons I've used in the past which all had U-series Intel processors, uh, which are the lower wattage. And as for the battery life, I found that I'm getting about six to seven hours uh, for normal web browsing and, and sort of light writing and, and chat messaging type usage, uh, which is seems about average for a PC these days. Obviously, it doesn't come close to something like one of the M1 Macs, um, but it's, you know, it's okay, it's not great. There's some AMD laptops that definitely do better than that. Um, so yeah, battery life is, is also just sort of average for an Ultrabook. Real world performance also feels great when using the X1 Nano docked with a monitor. I've done a lot of raw photo editing on the X1 Nano in Lightroom Classic, and it's provided a really great experience that feels more like a desktop than previous thin and light laptops I've used in the past. Uh, which is just pretty cool to get to that point. I will say one area where it's been a little bit of a letdown, which shouldn't be too surprising with the Intel Iris Xe graphics, is for 4K video editing, at least in DaVinci Resolve. Um, unfortunately, the timeline is, you know, scrubbing through the timeline is really slow, and comparing that to something like the M1 MacBook Air, it's just, you know, a night and day difference how much better the M1 is for video editing. So not a great 4K video editing machine, not even a good 4K video editing experience. The fans on the X1 Nano Gen 2 are one area where Lenovo did a great job. You will hear them under load or even under just, you know, sort of extended moderate loads, but they have a super pleasing whoosh sound that reminds me a lot of the Intel MacBook Air that I use for work. So they're extremely easy to ignore. The HP Aero 13 that I've been mentioning throughout this, um, the fans don't really run any more often on that than they do on the Nano, but they are way whinier and, and much worse to listen to. So the HP Nano or the X1 Nano has an elite fan game in the world of Windows laptops. All right, I also wanna talk about gaming, even though that's not one of the target uses for the ThinkPad X1 Nano. 
Obviously the XE graphics can't do much, but I was curious if the P-series processor and high-level bursty performance might make the X1 Nano a great thin and light eGPU partner. I tested out an old X1 Carbon 7th gen with an i7-8565U a few years ago with an eGPU, and I had a lot of stuttering, even in games where the GPU should have been having no problem at all. For my informal testing on my admittedly weak Radeon RX 5500 XT eGPU, which I'll note I have because it works with that Intel MacBook I mentioned earlier, the i5-1240P does a great job of keeping up with the eGPU, providing a very smooth experience when the settings are tuned in for that 5500 XT. This probably isn't particularly useful for people who are looking at the X1 Nano, but I found this too neat to not include in the video. Speaking of things that I feel like I need to include, I do want to mention that I've been unable to actually complete a clean installation of Windows 11 on the X1 Nano Gen 2, which is slightly weird since Windows 11 comes on it. I'm a slightly paranoid computer nerd, and I always like to perform a totally clean install of Windows on new devices, and I'm able to get through the initial installation of Windows 11 on the X1 Nano Gen 2, but then it refuses to actually boot up after that. Windows 10 installation works fine, so I've used that to upgrade to Windows 11 when I first got it, um, because Windows 11 is supposed to be better for 12th gen Intel CPUs, though I haven't really noticed a difference when I have used Windows 10 on it. And that was the only way I was able to get to Windows 11 was through Windows 10. But then that eGPU I mentioned, when I got that, I've only had that actually about a week, when I first connected that to the X1 Nano, it caused something to just go horribly wrong with the X1 Nano's um, like boot partition or the EUFI loader. I don't really know how all that stuff works, but it stopped booting to Windows 11. Then I hit that Windows 11 install issue again, which I'd forgotten about since I last dealt with it when I first got this almost two months ago. Um, and so that's why I'm currently running Windows 10 on it, which is what you've been seeing. So yeah, I've had some pretty weird issues with Windows 11 um, installations on this and booting, you know, that the eGPU broke that, which seems weird. I haven't had anything like that happen in Windows 10. So yeah, definitely a little bit of weirdness there. This is still a pretty new device while I have it. Um, I bought this pretty early and so hopefully Lenovo will have an update to fix this, but it is something I wanted to note in the review right now. So with all that in mind, where does that leave the X1 Carbon, or sorry, the X1 Nano Gen 2? Uh, it's a really thin and light laptop, super thin and light, like two and a half pounds. Uh, the CPU performance, surprisingly good. Those are really good positives. So this might be a really great laptop. If you're like a traveling business user where you travel a lot, where every little bit of extra weight and size really adds up. Uh, and then you would also really appreciate those video conferencing features with the sweet webcam. Um, and then maybe you wouldn't mind the fact that the keyboard and touchpad, the trackpad aren't so great because you know, you're not doing super heavy work on, maybe you're doing a lot of presentations or something. Um, that's maybe who it would be a good fit for. Unfortunately, I think most people would probably be better served by the full-size X1 Carbon rather than the X1 Nano. Um, you get the better keyboard, bigger trackpad, and more ports, which are which are handy. You know, I don't mind the all USB-C too badly, but the more ports do help. So, it's a good laptop. Uh, there's nothing like so crazy wrong with it, but for some reason, it just doesn't really do it for me. So, I have a really hard time really recommending it at the price that the X1 Nano goes for. So. I hope this review was helpful. Definitely let me know if you have any questions and I will do my best to give you an answer. All right, thanks for watching and have a good one.